I've been to Dublin many times, um, but I've never seen the city looking as good as it does today. So thanks for laying on the weather. And um, I, I went round uh, Dundrum Shopping Centre uh, at lunchtime because we've got a store in Dundrum. And I can see why people say Dublin's one of the fastest growing cities economically uh, in Europe. It's a really exciting place to be at the moment. But thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I want to talk about the Domino's brand and particularly how we are managing the massive transition uh, that's taking place in multi-site businesses everywhere caused by the online, uh, the move online. Um, as John said, I've been very blessed in my career. I've, I've had the opportunity to work for some terrific businesses. I actually uh, ran Tesco's fruit and vegetable business for five years and I have happy memories of visiting both Chile and Colombia with Joe Keeling uh, many, many years ago. Um, but I, I've worked through many, uh, many different uh, businesses and I feel very fortunate to find myself now as chief executive of Domino's and I hope I hope you're all customers. If you're not, then you're going to have an opportunity to try the product anyway before you leave here this evening. Um, our vision in Domino's is quite simple. We, we want to be the number one pizza company in the world and in every neighborhood. So we're not happy with just being the number one in every market. We want to be in every neighborhood because our business is all about delivery and collection and serving the customer. Our purpose is we want to feed the power of possible one pizza at a time. We have a phrase, we're only as good as our last pizza because every pizza we sell is handmade to order for the customer and then we aim to get that pizza in the customer's hands within 25 minutes of the customer having ordered it. That's our ambition. Um, and the other thing that is important to understand about Domino's is this thing about feeding the power of possible. Nobody would have believed that Domino's would have been successful as it has. And in many ways, it's a microcosm of the American dream. It's all about opportunity and what you can do when you really turn your mind to building a brand one pizza at a time. Our history, we started in the US in 1960. Our founder is still alive, he's a guy called Tom Monahan, and he and his brother bought two stores, which at the time were called Dominic's um, in, um, in Ypsilanti, Mi Michigan. And he saw the opportunity of delivering great pizza to customers. The business that, I, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. The business that I run has the master franchise for the UK, and what Tom Monaghan realized in the mid-60s was this was a great opportunity, but in order to exploit it, he needed to franchise it. He wanted to use other people's money to roll the brand out. And that was how he got into franchising. And then when he went international, he chose master franchisees. We opened our first store in the UK in 1985. Our first store here in Ireland opened in 1991. And we, the business I run, currently has the master franchise for the UK, Ireland, Switzerland, and we have a share in the business in Germany. This is what's happened to our business over the course of the last 10 years. You can see there, uh, over the course of 10 years, we've gone from around 450 stores in, in, in the UK and Ireland up to around 900 stores. So we've doubled the number of stores that we have in 10 years. But whilst we've done that, what we've done is we've increased our sales from around £240 million to nearly £900 million. So our sales have gone up by about three and a half times. Double the number of stores, three and a half times the sales. And there you are. You can see on the right-hand side, last year we made £71 million profit compared to about £14 million in 2006. So that's a measure of us bringing this ambition, this vision, of being the number one pizza company in every neighborhood and serving the power of possible. That's what we're achieving within our business. And when we look at the drivers of that, it really is about understanding that digital transition. And if you thought the growth on the previous slide was spectacular, then 
We've gone from over, uh, over 10 years, less than 20 million of sales online to nearly 600 million in 2015. So what we've done in building this brand and moving it to the next level is very much being in the grain of the way that consumers are thinking about the way they want to interact with multi-site businesses today. On mobile, it's even more spectacular. We took our first mobile order in 2010, and last year we did 350 million online. So again, an even more stark example of how you can achieve growth by embracing consumer trends and really investing to be in the grain of the way the customer is thinking. We took a step back last year because we 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 delivered this strategy and this growth very successfully but what we needed to understand was how long can it go on how why are we doing so well we could think of reasons but we thought we would better get somebody to tell us um, and also the other feature of our growth was the fact that we'd seen the entry into our marketplace of new types of businesses businesses like just eat deliveroo coming into our marketplace and potentially threatening our position. On the right-hand side there, you can see the word map, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and some really positive words coming from customers when they describe our brands. But the good news was that what, what the consultancy told us was that actually we could continue to grow. Because of sustained market tailwinds, which are driving the category. For example, the growth in population in our markets, and particularly the maturity of the target audience. One of my predecessors used to say, every time somebody dies, a pizza eater's born. Because the truth is that, I don't know how many of you, if, I, I could, if, you ask, if you're in a, doing a presentation in the US and you ask people, how many of, you, how many of your parents have pizza delivered? No, all the hands go up. You ask the same question in the UK, no hands go up. So actually what's happening is that generation that started discovering pizza around the turn of the century, they're, they're growing older, they're still ordering pizza, and we're very aggressive with, with younger people and, and particularly with students to keep topping up that hopper. So the maturing of the, uh, of, of the demography that we have will be a fuel for growth. And people like having food delivered. It's convenient. What we're also seeing is customers like chains. They prefer to deal with a brand that they know. And maybe there's some echoes there from Connor's presentation about how brands resonate with consumers. People want to move to quick service. Um, although the aggregators have come into the market, actually what they've done is increase the trend to ordering delivered food online, and we're good at that. We haven't seen any, we haven't missed a beat since Just Eat grew as sharply as they have in the UK. And what we're seeing by the way that we're managing the customer journey is that customers are increasing their purchase frequency. So we feel very positive, and on the right hand bottom corner there, you can see the, the opportunity we have in terms of penetration. Because in the UK and Ireland, we still only have about one store for 61,000 people, whereas in Australia, they have one store for 36. So actually, that store growth could go to a new level. So how do we, how do we turn that opportunity into reality? Where do we look at for our insights? Well, I think there are four things that we consider. Obviously, we do the regular brand tracking, checking awareness and attitudes towards key brand qualities. But we also, as, as, as Connor was saying, take a broad view of consumer trends. We, we, we listen to economic reports, we talk to people all the time, informally and formally, to get a broad view of what, of what customers are thinking. One of the benefits of being part of a global system is that we can knowledge share. So we can share with the US, we can share with Australia, India, Mexico. Domino's today has 12,000 stores across 75 markets. So we can share what's going on. And that's a huge learning community that can help us understand where to take the brand. And obviously we share with them what we're doing. 
And the other thing that, having worked in multi-site for many years, I've always really appreciated is the option to look at competition. I, I always used to say when, when I worked in food retailing, you can go inside the competitor's factory, you can go inside a store and see what's going on, you can go inside a restaurant and see what's going on. Because by observing what competition are doing and, and being prepared to accept that they may be doing some things better than you, you can learn and you can improve and you can then fold that in to these other components of data to adjust your brand proposition to make it right for the customer. What our work tells us is that there are three important customer priorities in our markets today. First of all, convenience is king. Easy is the new loyalty. The easier you make it for customers to order pizza, the more often they will order it. Simple. The second thing is the customer has to feel in control. One of the strengths of our business is the fact that we make every pizza to order by hand. What a wonderful opportunity to build on that resonance of the customer being in control, tailoring the product for what they want. And the third thing, in a very crowded market with huge choice of media channels to engage with customers, brand salience is massively important. And being top of mind is critical. But being top of mind doesn't mean spending all your money on digital marketing. It means being very thoughtful about the balance between the historic and maybe traditional marketing techniques like TV and outdoor, but at the same time taking the opportunity to embrace the new communication channels that are available to customers. So let me just talk about some things that we've done. We, we, we have an ambition for one-touch ordering, where we know your name, your address, your mobile phone number, your, your email address, your credit card number, and your preferred pizza order. So when you switch on the app, you just press one touch, and 25 minutes later, the pizzas arrive. So we have this mantra about how can we get to one touch easy ordering. And we're making great progress. We've got massive increases in registration of customers. We are collecting more and more data. And of course, once we've done that, that allows us to engage with you in a different way and use contemporary CRM techniques to really st incent more, more frequent purchases. The customer in control. We're very big on the pizza tracker. If you're a customer, you'll know this. This is where we tell you where your pizza is. It, are we making it? Is it in the oven? Is it on the cut table? Is it in the car on the way? We liked, and, and we've, we've sought to personalize this so that you can actually see when your pizza's coming, when the time is right to open that second bottle of wine to go with the pizza that's about to arrive. And then brand salience. I mentioned the importance of traditional advertising, but I, I am staggered at the volume of collateral that we're producing today in order to deal with all these different channels to market. So we sponsor the X Factor app. So when you want to vote for your favorite X Factor act, then you'll see Domino's featured on that. We're big on media presence online for key dates like Valentine's Day, which is one of our busiest nights of the year. We, 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 do, we, we, we target gamers with our FIFA campaign for Xbox or our tremendous ticket giveaway for the Rugby World Cup. And we're always thinking of devices and schemes and things that we can run in order to get content onto social media. But we've also increased our spend on TV. We, we've increased our spend on TV in the last year by over 80%. We sponsor Hollyoaks, which is a, um, a, a tea time soap, which particularly attracts customers in the, um, in, 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 in the teen category. And we've, in, in the last year, we've increased our gross rating points since 2015 from 1900 in, to 4,561. So we're really aggressively chasing that brand salience objective. 
And we're building the image that we, we took this idea of the homemade pizza and turned it into something which was actually an idea we stole from Australia called Pizza Legends, where you can design your own pizza, which talks about the customer being in control, but also has that implicit, implicit fresh made for you message. And last year, because it was 30 years, we celebrated 30 years, and we focused on the memories of the joy that people have had by enjoying Domino's pizza. But we're not standing still in 16, we're increasing marketing spend again, we're, increasing, we're continuing to sponsor Hollyoaks. We, we're very big on soccer. We, we have a spot before every live soccer game on Sky, BT, and we'll be in the Euros. We've, we've recognized as well that not all customers want pizza delivered. So we're, we're, we're doing carry out promotions where customers can show up, click on, order online, and then collect from the store. And we're very big on value for money deals, 80%. Of our, um, of our sales are with menu deals. We're learning more and more about the effectiveness of digital marketing and we're more and more data-led in the way that we assess the impact of our campaigns. I mentioned CRM earlier. But ease of ordering is a real passion because there's no doubt the easier we make it to order, the more frequently customers will, will, will order from us. And we're innovating in product as well. We've launched Hot Pepperoni Passion, Chicken Roulette. We've got a new range because one of our restaurant competitors in the UK, Pizza Express, is playing with delivery. So we're launching an Italiano range and we're launching new desserts as well because we have to keep the assortment fresh in order to continue to provide interest for our customers. We're also very big on listening to customers. So every customer will get an email the day after asking us to feed back on the, uh, 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 on the experience they had from Domino's. And we therefore get a regular track of satisfaction every day. We have actually, by global standards, quite a high participation in this. And what this method does, because we work with an agency called SMG, is allow us to benchmark both with similar businesses and compare the stores within the chain. So if one store's got a, a very high overall satisfaction level and another store's got a low one, then we can look at that. And what we've learned is it actually provides a very strong correlation with our traditional operational metrics. But it's very vivid. I always remember um, hearing from Fergal Quinn many, many years ago and him saying that feedback is a gift. You should always cherish it. And, and I'm very big on listening to customers every day and understanding what it is they're saying so that we can then improve the performance that we deliver to them of our core proposition. It all sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> and it is a wonderful business and I'm really happy. But I don't want to leave the presentation without just talking about two or three issues we have to deal with. Um, some of these issues have been slightly subsumed through the global financial crisis, but sustainability will come back. And we need to be aware of that. We need to be sure that we're very cognizant of our impact on the environment. More particularly, there's an immediate issue both here and in the UK, actually arguably more so here than in the UK, but it's definitely an issue that we're going to have to deal with, where people are concerned about the obesity epidemic that's affecting uh, a, a, a number of countries and the impact on what measures government can take to help with people's diets. And Connor talked about that in the context of the positive aspect of berries. We have to think what that means for us as a business which unashamedly doesn't sell healthy food. We have to think about how we can give our customers the information to make an informed choice, be transparent so that they have full data, and regularly seek ways that we can give more products that low-fat cheese, low-gluten or gluten-free bases, chicken topping rather than pepperoni, or even vegetarian. All of these things are available on our menu. And finally, as we grow, there's a big labor challenge. We're a service business. We're only as good as our last pizza. 
That pizza is handmade by an individual and delivered to the customer by another individual. And we have to be sure in, in recovering economies like the UK and here that we have the right labour available in order to continue to deliver the right brand experience. So we've, I think we've done a fantastic job and I'm really proud of the way we've navigated the transition. And one of the things that I've been doing recently is reflecting on some of the lessons that I've learned about how to transition in a multi-site business to the new world of the digital economy. I think the first thing to say is that you have to be a learning leader. You have to be open. You have to have your blinkers off and what I've described on the chart as a wide purview. The great thing is it's not that difficult to learn because you can sit in front of your screen and you can look at what Ocado are doing or what Amazon are doing or what Keelings are doing. But you have to do that. You, it's not like the old days where you drive around stores and look what was on the shelf. You have to be a learning leader, always listening. You have to think as a customer. You have to talk, be a customer. I, I was hugely impressed. I did a presentation a few months ago with a guy who runs Starwood, uh, Starwood Hotels. Starwood Hotels is Sheraton. I said to him, oh, where are you going for your holiday? He said, I'm going with Airbnb. I want to understand what their proposition's like. And I think you have to be a customer of your competitors and really understand the impact that these people have. And certainly when you're my age, you have to talk to digital natives. You have to talk to your kids, understand what they're doing, because that's what being a learning leader is all about. I think in the digital age, one of the things I've learned is data, you handle data in a different way. You handle data to drive decision making in an active way. So often when I think about business, data is used to justify what's happened in the past or explain why something's gone wrong, rather than thinking positively about how can we use data to make it better. How can we, there's so much data available in, 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 in online um, businesses, but you have to embrace that data and be open to use it actively to drive the business forward. I'm sure you'll see I'm not a resistor of change. You have to embrace the change. You have to update the infrastructure and you have to do it boldly. So many retail businesses I observe have resisted the change. They've not really thought through what the end game is. They've hoped the change is going to stop. It won't. And you have to be open to new ideas. And being open to new ideas means you have to accept failure. Fail fast. Accept failure risk, fail fast, move on. Learn from it, move on. And finally, and this is a really important issue for us, and we've seen it with Target in the US, with TalkTalk Talk in the UK, in the digital world, the, the, the issues of cyber risk are very real. Hacking, uh, denial of service, all of these things, you have to be ready for it. And that means being prepared for what you do when something goes wrong. I've talked very positively about our business, and I, I, uh, but we've learned some lessons on the way. The, most, the first and most important one is make this an organizational priority. Be very clear, we're going online, we're going mobile as an organization. Don't rely on a, a willing band of the, of, of the digital team sitting in a corner somewhere. Make it a real organizational priority, and that way you'll stimulate change. Accelerate the change. Invest to, to, to uh, don't resist the inevitable. Balance the marketing and be bold. So it's very exciting. It's a great uh, brand story, um, but there's lots of lessons to learn and lots of opportunities to take it to the next level. Thank you.